Today, I'm going to show you how dev containers can save you so much time configuring your development environment. As developers, most of us want to spend our time actually coding, but often you're spending time trying to figure out what dependency you need to install in order for your code to work. Or you're on a call with your teammate who has a Mac and you're trying to figure out why the code doesn't work on their machine, but it works on your Windows. Or you're onboarding onto a new project and you're reading pages and pages and pages of documentation trying to figure out what you need to install in order for the code to run. These are all common scenarios that dev containers can really help with. Dev containers are full featured development environments. A dev container houses its own app and dependencies, such as the required tools, libraries, and runtimes needed to run the code. In VS Code, you can use dev containers with the dev containers extension. This container has your technology stack and dependencies already set up for you. When you open your project in the dev container, your code will just work without downloading anything on your local machine. And the best part is, when connected to a dev container, your developer experience is exactly the same as if you open the project locally in VS Code. So let's dive into a demo. Now, dev containers work by using a Docker container, so you will need to have Docker installed. You can either install Docker locally on a remote environment or use other Docker compliant CLIs. For simpler configurations like what I'm about to show, you really don't need to do anything with Docker other than have it up and running. I'm going to use this VS Code Remote Try Python repo. To try it out yourself, you can either clone this repo or in VS Code, you can run the try a dev container sample command where you will see a list of sample repos for different languages. To follow along, you'll select the Python repo. Let's just try to run this code not in a dev container. This would be what traditional local development looks like, where you pull down someone else's code and just hope it works on your machine. So when I go to run it, I immediately get an error that the debug type Python is not supported. This particular error is prompting me to install the Python extension. And if we look at my extensions, I only have the dev containers and GitHub Copilot extensions installed. But other common errors you might see are that you might have the wrong version of Python installed, or you might not even have it installed at all. And I don't want everyone who pulls down this code to have to make sure that they have the right extension or versions or dependencies installed. So that's where dev containers come into play. Now, this project already has a dev container setup, which you can tell from the .dev container folder, which contains a dev container.json file. If I were working with a brand new project to add this .dev container folder, it's as easy as installing the dev containers extension, then running the command add dev container configuration files. From there, you'll pick a template for your tech stack and its version. You can then customize your dev container.json further if needed. Before we go over the dev container.json for this repo, let's talk a bit more about what this file is for. The dev container.json contains the metadata used to configure your dev container. You can install things like languages and tool sets that your code needs to run and further customize the container for your development experience, such as configuring different extensions and user settings. By having this file be a part of the source code, anyone who works on the project will be able to quickly spin up this customized dev container. Now let's take a look at what properties this project dev container.json configures. The dev container will have the name Python 3, and here we specify which Docker image we'll be using to create the dev container. Next, we have a customization section that will allow you to customize tool specific properties. So we are specifying that we want the code spell checker extension to come installed in our dev container. You might be wondering why we have VS Code specific configurations, and that's because dev containers can be used with tools other than VS Code using the dev container specification. We'll link to that documentation in the description, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to focus on VS Code. Now, we also have a ports attribute setting for port forwarding properties. And finally, we have a post create command. This means that after the dev container gets created, we will automatically run this pip install command for our requirements.txt, which is really handy. So let's now reopen this project in a dev container. To do that, we'll run the reopen in container command. Now, this will take just a few moments to spin up. As it does, you'll get a log of the dev container creation process, as well as see that post create command run. Now, when we look at our VS code, it looks almost exactly the same with a couple of key differences. In the bottom left, we have this button known as the remote indicator, which now is updated to show the name of my container from the dev container.json. When you click on the remote indicator, you will have a convenient entry point into popular remote commands. So for dev containers, we see a subset of five popular commands, and you can always use the command palette to access your full set of commands. Next, if we head to our extensions, we now see two sections, one for local installed 
and that's my dev containers and copilot extensions that I had installed in my local VS Code setup. And the second is a dev container section. These are the extensions that were installed only in my dev container. So we can see that the code spell checker extension that we saw in the dev container.json customization setting as well as a few Python and linter extensions. Now, when we were going over the dev container.json, we saw where the spell checker extension was explicitly configured, but there was no mention of the Python extensions. So how did the dev container know to include them? The answer is in the Docker image that was specified in our project's dev container.json. This is actually a pre-built image, and this pre-built image has its own dev container.json. This image's configuration then specifies dev container features, which are used to add dependencies in a standalone unit. For example, the Python feature comes with the Python and PyLance extensions installed, so that's how we are getting those installed in our dev container. By having this chain of references, your project's dev container.json can stay much simpler and cleaner, while still ensuring that behind the scenes, everything your code needs to run is being configured. This is a really powerful concept, so in the future, we'll post another video fully breaking down features, and pre-built images. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth. Does the code run? And voila, this Python app is up and running with no steps needed for me other than opening the code in a dev container. From here, you can make edits, debug, commit your code, everything that you're used to in your VS Code development environment, but now running in a container that has everything configured for you. And as your dependencies change, all you need to do is update your dev container configuration for a seamless experience. In the demo, we showed you how to get started with dev containers in just a few minutes. We also went over some really cool concepts like pre-built images, features, and templates. If you want to learn more, then you're in luck, because over the next few months, we're going to be posting a series of videos going over these more advanced concepts. So make sure you're subscribed to our channel so that you don't miss out. Happy coding!